Right. Once again, um, so I've got to remember to breathe this time. I, I did a talk in Scotland that, that went slightly wrong. I've not practiced this. I finished writing it about half an hour ago, as I always do. So I, I might overrun massively, or we might be done very quickly. Um, I, I have a, a rough overview, so I'm, I'm going I'm to talk for a bit and talk for a bit and, and, and then show you a lot of pictures. Um, so there's no, no videos, no moving stuff, just lots and lots of photographs. Um, for, for anybody who doesn't know who I am, um, not normally I'm in the lockpicking room. Uh, last Leeds B-Sides, I did not leave the lockpicking room all day. You know, I had food brought in and stuff. Uh, so I do lockpicking at conferences. Uh, I've I, offensive security for 20-some years. Uh, I'm now moving from um, sort of cyber security, which is a word I hate, to, to hopefully full-time physical stuff. Um, I, I, like I say, run stuff at conferences with Tim. Um, I, I, you know, I'm sort of hanging around with a lot of Tool UK people, the, the open organisation of lock pickers, um, and especially the UK chapter. Um, I hang around on UKLockSport.co.uk, which is a wonderful forum that I, I, I don't spend long enough looking at. Uh, I write far too many slides. Uh, I, I have a serious eBay problem. Um, I'm, I'm deliberately not putting any of the cost of any of the stuff I'm going to talk about today on here for, for fear that, that, that my other half finds out how much money I've been spending. Um, I help run DC441452 or DC Gloucester, but it might be moving to Cheltenham because the pub we used to use is, um, is being demolished, we think. Uh, I hang out at Rehab in Cheltenham. That's reverse engineering, hacking and beer. Uh, where, where we drink beer. So my first beer of the year was at rehab. Um, and I'm, I'm pondering starting up a, a YouTube channel or a blog or something because people keep telling me they're actually interested in this. Um, I, I, I had a horrible thought last night. Like when I was a kid, my granddad used to drag me around museums and stuff and show me like steam engines and dull, boring, mechanical things. And that's basically what I've got for you today. It, it's like, like yeah. oh, look at this lock. Oh, is, here's another one. Oh, isn't this... A yeah, so so if you're not interested in locks, this is probably not the talk for you. Um, so I'm going to talk, I say, about a bunch of... Well, in fact, okay, so I, I, I went to a conference in the Netherlands um, the back end of last year uh, where I, I bought... A, I, it, was, it was run by Tool. It was a brilliant event. Um, I bought a lot of locks off a lot of people from all over the world. And I thought, right, I'll write a talk and I will explain all these locks. I'll just very quickly rattle through them. And, and I've written 107 slides and I've done maybe a fifth of them. So, so yeah. <laughs> so, so, let's see. This is, this is merely part one. There will be more to follow. Um, I'm going to talk about the locks, sort of some of their designs, how they work, and how you might think about attacking some of them. Uh, now, of course, when it comes to locksmithing, um, there, there are sort of two approaches. Um, covert, no overt, and depending on what you're trying to do, it's all red team, pen testing type world, we, we have to do the sneaky covert stuff, because most of the time they won't let us break things. But then I know people who do, you know, like actual, you know, we will do burglar, burglar simulations, so we won't do any of the clever stuff, we will just come in and snap locks and shoulder barge doors and that sort of things. So, you know, there are t techniques on both sides, and obviously defences have been implemented to try and stop both sides. I mean, ultimately, you, you, you can't make a lock that is undefeatable, because ultimately, like, when it breaks and you need to get a locksmith in to, to fix it, you know, they have to be able to open it somehow. You're, you're buying yourself time. You know, nothing is going to stand up to a sufficient amount of high explosives. Um, someone says that the thermal lance. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we've got, I've got a whole talk. We, we, we made a thermal lance years ago. It was Freaky Clem's idea. It did work, um, but we haven't tested it since. <laughs> The other thing I do is I, I try and read a bit. Um, I started off buying, like, years ago, lots and lots of little cheap books on lock picking. Um, and, and then as time's gone on, I, I've sort of increased the amount of money I'm spending. Um, if anybody wants some recommendations on books, come come talk to me. I've got a couple with me. Uh, this one in particular. So so I first got an interest in lock picking, God, about 20 years ago. And there was a, an electronic version of this book, which was a trial version available, because they, they did it as a... Uh, like a, an online thing with videos and stuff, um, and I started reading it, and it was it was fascinating. Um, those two books were 170 quid, which is the cheapest I've ever seen them. They used to be about you know five or six hundred for the set. I mean, again, I intended as reference material for sort of professional people, not for your average hobbyist. Um, but but they are they are brilliant. The trouble is, is I think it's it's seventeen hundred pages, so I haven't read them cover to cover yet. I sort of dip in and out when I'm looking for specific bits. But again, I would I would recommend them, and I've got I've got them with me if you want to have a look. Um, so right, so we're going to start today um, talking a little bit about warded locks, mostly because what I actually want to talk about is lever locks and, and, and warded locks uh, leads into that. So so you know back. <coughs> For a long time, all we had were warded locks, uh, and warded locks are very simple. So, so an example of one I picked up on eBay. Um, it, it's a very simple latching mechanism. Uh, the the key 
fits through a series of wards, which are little metal things that, that stop it turning. So they're incredibly easy to defeat because you just get a blank key and you know mark it up with something, put it in, try and turn it, take it out, see where there's marks, file those away. Um, and it's where the idea of skeleton keys comes from. Because ultimately, uh, you know, a skeleton key is a key that's had every bit taken away apart from the thing that actually needs to operate the lock, <coughs> so it will fit no matter what the warding is. And I've got, I've got a, a simplified example of that later on. Um, I've not taken this one apart yet, but because I'm scared I'll not be able to get it back together. When I, when I got it out of the box when it was delivered, it, it works, and, and like a load of rust fell out, mm. and, and there's no like nice easy screws to take apart, so I'm, it, it, it's, yeah, it's waiting to be done. Um, I've got some pictures. My, I live in a Victorian house, and, and when we, and apologies for the photograph quality in these. These were taken with a Fujifilm digital camera in 2003 at a resolution <laughs> of about 640 by 480. With I don't understand focus, and my eyes don't work. So, um, but but this was you know back then I, I knew about pin tumblers because that's what everybody starts picking. Uh, and I said, like, oh, well, I've got this house. Um, I don't like doors, so we've taken a lot of doors off. So it's like right, I'll take on the locks part, um, and it's a really simple warded lock. Uh, again, slightly fuzzy pictures. Um, so, you know, there, there is a bolt that slides back and forth, uh, and there is one spring-loaded thing that holds it in place. Uh, so you'll see the outside the lock, and then you can see the, the bolt inside. Oh, and I found, like, a, a one-pence piece in it when I dismantled it, because, <laughs> you know, people shove money in locks, apparently. Um, so, let's say, if you look at the picture on, hang on, the, the left, it's just with the bolt lifted down. thing on the right, uh, the, the big bit that I'm going to step off camera, that is actually the spring, um, and there's this little latch... So when you put the key in and turn it, um, it, it lifts the latch out of the way and slides the bolt. Nothing, nothing really much to it. Uh, you can you know, lift it to any height as long as it, it clears it. It's fine. Um, let's say you can see the wardings. So if you look at the key, uh, again, I'll, I'll look at the picture on the left. You know, you can see there's these holes cut in the middle of the key. And if you look at the picture on the right, you can just see like the little stumps of metal that that key needs to. You know, to go around. Um, and obviously, if you don't have that cut in the key, it won't turn because the bits of metal are blocking it. Um, so I wanted to find a, a more, slightly more modern example when I was, I was getting ready for this talk. So again, get on eBay, find a cheap old lock without the key. And just by looking at the picture on eBay, I can see that, you know, there are wards in there. It's brilliant. It's a warded lock. So I get it. I, I soak it in oil for a bit to try because it's horribly rusted. Um, and, and then I try and turn the screws and all I do is end up um, spinning the, the, the bits on the back, it, it wouldn't uh, wouldn't come apart. So, so you get the trusty tools out and hit it with a hammer a few times, um, punch the um, the screws out, and again inside it's it's really simple. There is there's this um, sliding bolt, and there is one latch behind it. Uh, and again, I haven't got the key, um, but, but you know the key would would lift the latch and slide the bolt. And the warding itself are these bits. So again, you can see you know you're going to have to get something in there that will get round them. And, you know, people would open them with bits of wire or, or, you know, anything you like, as long as you can get it in and around there, so that the security of them was the warding, which isn't terribly secure. Um, thinking back to the um, the lock that was on my house, so I, I sort of went looking for a modern equivalent, um, and Yale sell these, these rim deadlocks uh, for, for garden or internal door security. I mean, they're not terribly secure. Um, they're not warded at all. I mean, if you look at the keys, there's no reason for like, these bits to be put out. You could just put a flat key in because there's nothing to stop it. Um, they're actually quite clever because they're reversible. You can do them, put them either way up for left or because otherwise, you know, if you're putting locks on doors, you need to know, you know, they're left facing or right facing. This way works either. Um, and again, all that happens is, is you turn the key and it's like a, a pincer movement, the, the sprung thing on the side. So it lifts the little notch out the way and the bolt slide and then it drops back in. Again, would, wouldn't be terribly hard to defeat. Not not high security. Not intended to be high security. Uh, and oh, hang on, I actually have animation of it open and closed. So again, not not a lot to it. So right, so lever locks. So like I say, warded locks were around forever and ever and ever, um, and and were terribly insecure. So in 1778, uh, Robert Barron came up with this idea of the Barron lock. Um, now I've I've. Uh, I've struggled to find any decent pictures of it because like, people who collect these things have, have copyright on them and, and get annoyed if you steal their photos. But I found an old picture in the um, Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, and if you look, it's, I mean, it's slightly different than Lever Locks today because, okay, you've got the, the two lever tumblers. Uh, the key goes in and those will lift to different heights. If you overlift them, it'll block the lock. Um, but, you know, it lifts them out of the way and then the, the, the lock will slide and when you turn the key, they'll drop back in and it holds it in place. Now, the trouble is that the original ones, they only had two levers and, and the, only a possible, a limited number of cuts. And I mean, if you think about like crypto, you know, like, like big, bigger keys, more key space, a lot more stuff. So, so you could build, you know, you, like 20 keys and you've got any key that would ever work in this. 
Um, and again, as, as time goes on, you know, we just add more and more and more. And as you'll see, the, the sort of number of levers increase. But it was, it was a revolutionary design. Um, so to, if this will play, uh, animation I nipped off Wikipedia somewhere. So sort of modern lever locks. Um, again, you know, the key throws the bolt, but it also lifts the levers to just the right height so that the gaps align and the stump that's on the bolt will slide through. So again, they're, they're you know, simple. Um, I mean, as you'll see when we look at some actual examples of them, the levers aren't completely square. They've got sort of round cuts in them. Um, so it was that right. So I, I want to start buying some simple locks that I can start taking apart and looking at to understand how they work. So you go and look on eBay and you find cheap. I mean, there's there's thousands of these uh, sort of cabinet locks, you know, intended for locking cabinets, I guess. Um, a lot of them will have been like handmade. You know, I, I have no idea how well this particular one is. Um, it, it's been very well restored. I mean, it's like it's like mirror polished. The, the guy did it as clearly, um, really put a lot into it. And again, they're really simple. So you've got you've got two levers um, and bolt. So you take the back off. There's the bolt. Take the bolt off. And behind it, the two levers. Um, key interacts with those. Lifts them to the right height. It will open or close. Uh, <coughs> completely disassembled. And I say, this is my new hobby now, is just taking lots and lots of photos of, well, I take that bit off, take a photo, take that bit off, take a photo. I mean, mostly so when I come to put it back together again, I can <laughs> lock and work out where did that thing come off. Um, trouble with buying those locks, I mean, you can see one of the springs is snapped, it's short, and the others, they should be the same, it still works. Um, but again, you know, old locks, um, you, you often, yeah, don't know what you're getting. Because of course, on eBay, they'll show you lots of pictures of the outside of it, but you don't necessarily know what's inside. Uh, so that was you know, a nice simple one to start off with. I then noticed this one, and it's like, oh, the key's got warding on it. It's probably it's probably got some clever warding inside. Um, and this is nothing. So so back you know sort of Renaissance times, like like, like the keys they made for warded locks, they got beautifully ornate and looked really complex, and and, and they were really simple inside. It's just the, the keys look good. So you know people think, oh, that's, that's a you know, really ornate key. The lock must be really complicated. And it isn't, it's all lies, it's just, yeah, just make things look pretty. And, and sure enough, this is no different. If you, if you crack it open, it's very simple, the last one, slightly different design in, in the way the bolt works, but, the, but there's no warding at all. <laughs> so, so the key, they, they didn't, they, you know, they've wasted their time carving that, that pattern in the key, because there's not actually anything that it does internally. So it's not a warded lock, it, it's just another two lever lock. Um, like I said, you know, so, so, there's going to be a limited number of keys you can make for two lever locks. So, well, what do you do? Well, you stick more levers in. So, you know, something like this, which is a four lever lock. So, you know, twice as as, um, as complicated. Again, probably handmade. Um, it's oh. handmade. Oh, does it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the I, I, I can put something in the machine that says handmade. You know, it's, it's all right. Mr. Gullible over there. Okay. Would you like to buy some magic beans? Um, <laughs> And it's interesting because I, I noticed as I took this apart, it's like, why is, what is that weird? Like, why is there all those circle patterns? Um, and look at the key, and somebody's carved the number eight in it, which I have no idea what, what relevance that has. Um, the other thing to notice about this is if you, if you look at the levers on the, on, on the right, um, so the bottom one, it, it's got like um, sort of scalloping cut into it. That's a, a thing they do to stop them sticking. If you look at the one at the top, it's actually got a, a big line gouge through it. Um, and, and when I took this thing apart, you know, it's so. Yeah, if if you if you like a clean freak buying old locks and taking bits is is quite unpleasant. Um, they are full of all sorts of, of, of dirt and crap and, and dried up oil and God knows what, and lots and lots of little bits of brass. Because you know, over time, you've got a steel key rubbing against brass. You know, it will it will wear out. But I guess you know, it keeps locksmiths in work. What am I doing? All right. Uh, another one. Now this one, I, I know it's almost as old as I am. Almost. Because um, it's got the date stamped on it, so it must be true, right? Um, <laughs> again, yeah, buying things on eBay don't necessarily... I, 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 there's a lot of... Um, I've bought things described as, you know, a particular type of lock, style lock. And it's like, well, is it original? Is it a copy? I I don't know. Um, but again, you know, it's... It, it's, it's 20 years younger than I am. Making me feel older. Well, I, 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 they get a lot older. Um, don't don't worry. There'll be there'll be you know ones ones that we make you feel comparatively young. Uh, and again, inside it, it's trivially simple. You've got very similar set of levers. Um, not a lot of scooby features involved in them, and it just slides a, a plate back and forth, which which interacts with the. Um, so again, this is for like you know like a, a jewelry box or something, rather than a, a thing with a set of doors. Um, and, and again, we dismantle it. Um, simple brass washer for some spacing. And again, just the two levers, which are horribly covered in oil. That's the other thing, like, is they buy stuff off eBay and, and you get it apart. And the things people put in locks over the years to make them work or not um, can be quite unpleasant. 
Uh, lots of cleaning involved. Uh, and again, just, just stripped to its component parts. You know, they're very simple. There's, there's not a lot to them. And it's interesting, though, because, you know, I say that it's, a, it's an older design, but if you look at things like lever padlocks, it's basically exactly the same, just, you know, you know in modern format. So again, that's a, I think that's just a master um, four lever padlock, taking the bits. Uh, tooling, uh, so I've not really talked about tooling yet. So, so if you know about picking pin tumblers, you know, you have something to apply tension and something to move the pins. Same thing with lever locks. Uh, so, so this is a, just a generic lever padlock set. So you've got three different um, tension tools for, for different size locks. And then a, a bent bit of um, incredibly stiff wire that you use to actually manipulate the levers. Um, and let's say in, in, in looking at these, you know, they've got no false gates. They've got no things designed to like slow you down. So, so they are comparatively easy to, to pick up and learn. Again, we're going to get onto more complex stuff. Uh, the other thing I keep buying is, is just more random padlocks. Um, the, the Abus on the, the left in the middle um, is the cheapest lock I've ever bought on eBay. It, it cost me one euro from Germany and 17 euro shipping. <laughs> um, but it's a bargain. And the, the one on the right, um, some sort of gas board lock. Again, I, I need to dig into it and see if I can find out more information about it. I mean, that, that's the other thing, you know, f finding out... I mean, there, there is a community of, of, of people who collect locks and talk about them, but a lot of the times you buy stuff and it's like, I can find literally no documentation on this at all. I mean, if you're lucky, it might have a patent number on it. Neither of them do. Um, so again, I now have, you know, I've spent a lot of money buying locks, but I now have like months or years worth of research ahead of me um, working out what they do. Um, and one I can talk about in slightly more depth. So is this idea, um, these are American locks that were made sort of start of the 19th Century, twentieth century, nineteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. <laughs> so, okay, pan, uh, so called pancake locks, and they're actually lever pad locks. Um, they, they were they branded them for all sorts of people. Um, the, the first one I bought was incredibly cheap, and as it turns out, when we got it, that's because it's broken. Somebody's clearly tried to take it apart in the past and wrecked it. There's a couple of bits missing from inside, but it was interesting to see how it works. So, I mean, so basically, you've got the um, the, the shackle that will move up and down if you lift the levers to the right height so that that swinging arm can drop into the gap. Um, again, when, when we actually took it apart, it was it was disgusting in there. Um, and let's say some of the springs have snapped, some of them are missing. There was an entire peg missing. So let's say we're fairly sure somebody's tried to fix it, failed, jammed it back together and stuck it on eBay. So an idiot like me can buy it. Uh, my friend Tim then pointed me at a slightly better example. Um, Thanks, Tim. Uh, that's more of my money gone. Um, and it's, it's a lovely thing. And somebody's done quite a good job of... I mean, the other thing I, I like is cutaway locks. You know, I like to be able to see how, what's inside. How do they work? Um, yeah, hopefully I'm, I'm going to start uh, I'm, I'm going to start learning how to use a, a mill soon so I can start producing my own. Um, hopefully there's profit to be made in them because I've got a lot of old locks I could chop up <coughs> and sell for money. Um, but I say it's, it's an interesting design. It's not something I've seen. Uh, horribly weak. There, there, there's lots of videos online of people opening them. So basically you get um, six nails from a nail gun and you clamp them between two pieces of wood. So, so they're, you know, they're held but not completely solidly. And you basically stick them in the keyhole and, and wiggle it about and eventually it'll pop open. And then when it's open, the levers lock in place. So if you look uh, on the one that's open... You know, that bar is now holding the levers physically where they need to be, so you can easily measure the right heights and, and make a key. So again, you know, like you, you sort of look at them, and, and if you know about pin tumblers, you know, well, I could, I could sort of stick a pick in, but I have no idea what's going on. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, they are, they are impressionable. Um, so yeah, let's see, interesting. If anybody wants to see any of these, I've, I've got them all along in the room at the end. Uh, another curiosity, uh, mm -hmm. which is not something I'd seen before, uh, although somebody pointed out this morning, you used to get um, lever locks with like spring catches on railway carriages. Uh, this is allegedly uh, a chub lock from a, a post box. Um, so the idea is, if if you look uh, at the far picture, um, the the bolt is you know like a like a yellow front door that you close. It's a spring loaded catch. Um, what this has that I've I've never seen on a lever lock before is. Um, is it's got a, got a locking mechanism. So the trouble is, a lot of locks, like your, your yellow front door lock, if you leave it open, I'll come and get like a shim and, and just shim it out of the way because there's nothing holding it in place. So so these sorts of things, which are the, the being of our... Well, actually, no, they're brilliant because nobody fits them properly. So the one on the left... Uh, sorry, the, that one, just a regular spring-loaded catch. You know, it would have a handle to turn it. You push the door shut. But again, if I get a shim, I can, I can pull it out of the way. You see them like this, where there's, where there's a second bit... 
Um, but the trouble is, like builders don't understand these, and they, they make the holes that they go in for too big. The idea is that thing should slide out the way, so that they should both get pushed back as the door shuts. But the little one should stay pushed in, and the other one should spring out. At that point, a locking me- mechanism um, cuts in, and you cannot physically move the spring-loaded one. Um, but like I say, builders make holes too big because oh, it's too awkward to fit. So we've got into lots of places because they've got <coughs> this mechanism in, and, and it's not been fitted properly, and it's not working. Um, I mean, if you look inside the locks, you can see basically if you push, if you push both of the bits of metal, it will just spring back and forth. But as soon as um, that one stays in and the one behind it goes the other way, that little lever drops down, and it physically stops it from moving. Um, so again, the only way you're going to get that, you know, you, you can't shim that anymore. You can't push it out the way. You're going to have to put something in the keyhole, and, and more bits of it coming out. So that's that, that little lever out. Now, I was looking at this, and it, 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 there seems to be me to be a blatant flaw in it. Um, so, so there is one of those levers that lifts the little arm out the way. So, so all you need to do to make it shimmable is lift that one lever up. You don't have to pick the rest of them. Um, I'm, I'm not suggesting this is a, some amazing new lock OD I found, but it's just, again, I'm, I'm trying to get in the mind of thinking... the right one to lift. Mm, yeah, well, lift all of them. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter. Because um, I say, as long as you can lift the... Sh- I mean, I've got... If it's installed in some post box with a big heavy door, you'd hope there's something to stop you getting hold of the latch and moving it out of the way. I, I've not investigated any post boxes to see. Um, again, only play with locks you own, um, and not ones that are in use. And again, strip it down, um, you know, slightly more complex because it's got six levers in it. Can I count? Six, yes. Um, some, if you lock the, um, the plate that goes on the side where the, the the, the keyhole in would be has been sort of strengthened. There's, there's more material there because again, so another attack against these things, you drill into them if you're doing stuff stuff destructively. So they start putting you know hardened plates and extra bits in to stop you drilling. <laughs> uh, I haven't taken these apart yet. Uh, so the Western Electric 30C, uh, these were used in the US to protect uh, coin boxes and phones, and for a long, long time these were thought to be. Un- unpickable. They've got a really interesting um, floating cam design that makes it difficult to tension them. They've got a weird um, like grabber that holds the levers in place if you try and tension them. Uh, they're really clever. Somebody uh, last year, I think it was, came up with a method of um, decoding them, and based off the back of that, there's a guy who has been releasing videos of him picking them. Um, he, I think he himself points out he has like one lock that he's learned to do, and he can do that one lock, whereas if you gave him a bunch of locks he didn't know, you know, it would take him a significantly longer amount of time. Um, but it was one of these locks that for a long time was thought like there's no recorded record of people actually picking them. Um, another one's a chroma protector, which I have one with me. I've got pictures in this slide deck. But again, I don't think anybody has publicly opened that. Um, and let's say this was another one, and then last year this video came out, and, and there was a lot of argument between people I know of, like, oh, it's fake, it's been set up, it's been modified, it's not right. And, and you get that a lot in, like, like lock sport paranoia communities, um, of like, you know, oh, what's, where'd that bit of wire drop from that you suddenly see in the picture? So again, right, you do the video again, and, but let's say it's, you know, they're, they're interesting locks. Um, what's, I mean, what's funny is the, the thing they replaced them with, um, which was a, a medico based lock, massively weaker lock. Uh, but, you know, they, but they got rid of the previous one. And, and this was nice. So this is some stuff I got for free um, because when I when I bought these locks off eBay, one of them only had one key rather than two keys. So like, we're really, really sorry. We've only got one key for it. It's like, I don't care. I only need one key. So we're like, oh, we'll send you some some like scrap for spare bits, uh, which got me some of these medical locks, which at the time I didn't have, or, or the, and the ones I've seen didn't have keys. I mean, the, the medical locks are interesting themselves because they look like pin tumblers, right? But they've only got one pin in them, not two pins. So they're driverless. Um, they have got a sidebar, um, but yeah, no, no, it's, it's again. I, I need to get round to stripping them and taking them apart, but but that will be in my my you know pin tumbler talk when I get round to it. Um, right now, now a bit older. Um, so Chatwood's invincible, and I thought I had notes, but it says no notes about when this was made. Eighteen uh, hundreds. Uh, so this is a safe lock, and again, I, I like safe locks because they're big, heavy, clunky things. Um, it's interesting for a number of reasons. So it, it's uh, it's what's termed a powder-proof lock. So it's a back when when these things were being made, like, like the only real explosive people get hold, get hold of is gunpowder. So so the way to open the safe is you stuff the locks full of gunpowder and you ignite it. Um, but so they make them with very little open space in them to reduce the amount of powder you could get in. 
Um, so, so you know, the, the force of what gunpowder you could get in wouldn't be enough to damage the lock and open it. Um, obviously, then, like, high explosives came out and, and, and that ruined it. So, let's say, if you look at sort of modern lever locks, you know, they've got huge spaces inside, whereas these are all, you know, far more, um, far more tight and, and restrictive inside. Um, this one's interesting um, because it has a thing to, to try and stop... If, if you're trying to pick it, it has a, a mechanism to block it. Because again, like I say, the way you normally open locks is, you know, put the, put the bolt under tension, feel the levers, feel what's sticking. Um, it's got this weird contraption, which is the, the spring-loaded bit here. So the second you try and put tension on the bolt, that lever drops down and physically jams the lock. Um, oh, the other thing to notice, of, of course, are the springs. So you know, now we have, like, like sprung steel springs. But back then, it's just, it's just one piece of brass and the springs built in. Um, again, you see that in a lot of old locks. I mean, the other things is, um, you know, hardened steel plates where you would want to drill where the important bits are. So again, they've thought, right, we'll make most of the body out of brass, but we'll reinforce these sections to make it more difficult to drill into. Um, and like I say, it's, it's got this weird, like, active mechanism to um, to try and stop you picking it. Um, I know, you know my, my friend Nick was saying, you know, he uses locks as an example of things that are, you know, like, like, like dumb defences. And, and no, there there is... There are active defences in them. Um, and like I say, you know, it was designed sometime in the 1800s. Um, and I was, I was digging. This is one I have actually done a bit of digging in. Um, so, so, you know, <coughs> did it work? Was the design effective? Well, you know, a lock manufactured in the 1880s. Uh, this article is from 2005. And like, a, you know, like world-class safe cracker had to end up drilling the thing because it, it can't work out using sort of modern techniques and modern tools uh, how to get it open. Um, so yeah, you know, so interesting, uh, interesting note. It's funny. I think I think the chap with the guy that made them, he ended up going bankrupt. Oh, I forget what it was. There was a funny story about um, you know made all this money in locks and then, then lost it all. Um, but yeah, more more antique safe locks again. You know, powderproof lock designed to be you know, not a huge amount of space inside. Um, so so I bought this as you know the description on eBay was antique tans detector safe lock. It, it's not a detector in the classic sense. So, so Chubb famously made a detector. And the idea was that was it could tell if you overlifted some of the levers and it would physically, there was a locking mechanism that would block. So, so then the, the normal key wouldn't work anymore. So you could tell somebody had tried to pick it and you had to get a special key to come and, and undo it. This, this doesn't have that. It, it's more like the last one where it's got, you know, something active to try and stop you, stop you picking stuff. The, I mean, the other interesting thing is it's, I guess the first lock I've put up that has a curtain. Uh, so the idea of a curtain is, oh, I'll show you on that slide, it's this big round metal thing. So the idea with that is, um, you know, if you think of a, a normal sort of keyhole, like if, if you put P in and turn it, like nothing happens, you know, you've still got a big hole there. The idea of a curtain is it obscures that hole. So, so as you turn the key, like basically that gets covered off. So you can't get tools in, you can't see what's going on. Uh, the other thing is because it's um, it's a solid piece of metal above, you know, you can't lock into the lock, you can't get tools up into the lock. Um, Chubb came up with that because his detector lock, somebody worked out that they could put a bit of um, like burning wick in, get suit on the inside, and they could use that suit to work out how the lock worked and, and to impression stuff. So he's like, right, I'm not having that. We'll, we'll stick a curtain in. And again, modern locks, you know, you start seeing that sort of stuff in. It, it's very common in, you know, lever locks, mortise locks. Well, like intern, uh, sorry, like external door mortise locks, not internal ones. Because um, again, why would you want such a high security lock, an internal door? Uh, so yes, yeah, so the first lever just just holds the, the curtain in place. Behind that, you've got the actual levers, which there are six of. Um, the other thing about this, when I bought it, I looked at the key and it's like, oh, again, it's just got some. They've got some unnecessary cutting. <laughs> um, this is something I, I've never seen on any lock other than this one, which was Tan's patent guard. Uh, so the idea is one of those levers actually has warding sticking out of it. Um, so if you look in the pictures, it's the one with the, the shadow, or if you look on the far side, it's, you know, it's upside down. So without the key with that notch cut in, if you just put like a normal key in, you're going to lift that lever really, really high, and you can't get at the one it's protecting. Uh, and lifting that lever really, really high um, lifts this thing up, which blocks the stump. So again... You, you're putting another, it's a, you know, the other one dropped down to block it, this one lifts up. Um, it's also got this, this interesting sprung loaded thing that, that catches on, on that, um, little hook if you do try and, uh, do, do try and tension it. Um, and again, lovely, lovely, big, heavy chunk of metal. Um, I mean, that's the other trouble with this as a hobby. You know, like carrying stuff in today, I, I, I don't think how much weight I've lost or gained. 
um, because they're not uh, they're not light. Uh, another interesting example. So this is one I picked up in the Netherlands off um, off some French guys. <coughs> Uh, so dual control. So the idea being, you know, if, if you've got a safety deposit box in a bank and you don't trust them, you, you need both keys to operate it. Um, I need to make a metal key because unfortunately, I um, the, the 3D printed one that came with it uh, wasn't the most robust thing. It, it worked absolutely fine until I dismantled it and put it back together again. And I think I might have over tightened something. Um, but again, the idea is uh, if you look at that one, I've I've not dismantled the fish lock yet. Uh, one of my friends nicely posted a, a how-to guide online for me. Um, but, but basically, you, you take it apart and springs and things go everywhere and, and you need to build some, some semi-complex tooling to get it all back together. So I've, I've not risked that one yet. Um, but that's really simple. You know, the, 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 the stub that sticks out just turns, which will either allow that to you know slide or not. But then, of course, you've got the lever bit as well. So, so I guess the, the bank would have the fishier key probably and you'd get the what was the 3D printed key and you know you need to turn the one before you can turn the other um, but again a fairly you know fairly simple um, lever lock uh, oh I should have taken that side out that's my notes so yeah so, so up till now all of this of course has been like, like one sided keyholes there's no I mean you don't get in a safe and open it from the inside out um, so we'll start looking at some some you know more more recognisable things uh, so again Ratner Ratner were a Victorian safe and lock manufacturing company. Um, I've got a Victorian rack and safe in Belfast in a warehouse that I need to get over here, but they're kind of difficult to move because they're big, huge, heavy things. I mean, I've got the key for it, and, and the safe itself I have no interest in, but I want the lock. Um, and it's amazing, I, I get asked because our DEF CON group, I, I opened one of the, the, um, the, the pub we had it in, they had an old, well, not an old, they had a like, little digital keypad safe that they didn't have the keys for. Apparently, this is common, like. People, landlords, when they leave pubs, like lock things up and take the keys away with them. Um, so I opened it because it was it was trivial. It had a, a wafer lock on it, and, and I've now been in several pubs where people have mentioned, and I've been you know like like up in Abertay, that oh come come down into the cellar and have a look. Can you open this safe or this safe or this safe? Because like I say there's these old safes that have been there for God knows how long that, that you know haven't been opened in ages that nobody has the keys for that are probably empty. I mean again we we did one in. Um, one of my friends was renovating a club in Malvern, uh, and there was an old safe in there. And I went and looked at it, and it's like, there is no way I'm opening this, but I'll help you strip some of the furniture and take stuff out. And, and we pulled a load of shelving off a, a wall, and down from behind the back of it came the key. I went, excellent, what's inside it? Absolutely nothing. Uh, the, 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 one in, the one in Gloucester, there were two old £5 notes, like not legal tender anymore, and like a bank paying in slip. So again, not, not the best um, sort of heist in the world. Um, but yeah, so anyway, right now, Victorian company, you know, big heavy locks. And again, very, very simple design. Um, would probably stand up significantly better to drilling and things than modern locks because it is just, just, you know, there's more of it. Um, and again, let's say the, the, the interesting thing, let's say, is the, you know, the brass springs because they didn't have sprung steel or they didn't want to use it. Uh, getting into more modern stuff. So I bought these like in the 90s when I was first started looking at uh, lever locks. Trivially simple. Uh, like I say, a lot more space. Uh, again, uh, two and three lever locks are intended for internal doors. Um, if you're looking to open these, I mean, if people are familiar with triad keys or jigglers, things that are roughly key shaped. I mean, obviously, with only two or three levers, there's only a certain number of possible profiles. And so you know, put these in, wiggle them around, and, and surprisingly often they work. Uh, the other thing you can use is um, wheel picks. I was told these are called. One of my locksmith friends disagrees. And again, the idea is you have. Um, just two knobs, knobs you can turn that, that move the two bits. You put one against the bolt, try and move it, and then you use the other one to feel the, the levers. And, and again, if there's you know if there's no features um, to like like false gates and things to, to throw you off, that they're not not that difficult to open. Um, he says not having practiced it in a long time. Now, the other thing, of course, about lever locks, if you have one with keyholes on both sides, is don't leave your keys on the inside because it's trivial to get things that you can just reach through and turn the key from the outside. Um, so yes, yeah, so if you have a you know like mortise lock, like lock it and take the key out and put it somewhere else, because um, otherwise you know I'm just going to come and, and undo it anyway. Uh, buying random stuff online, uh, so apparently London Fire Brigade. I guess if there's places they need to get to, you fit locks that they have the keys ready for. Uh, there's two of them apparently, no, one number two, and I looked at them. It's like those those keys look awfully awfully similar, and sure enough, when I start taking the locks apart. So, so basically, it, it's a warded lock. Those little bit, bits of metal are the wards, so that the key has to have notches cut out so it can get past them. Um, it's only got a single lever. It's a one-lever lock. 
So again, not the most complicated of things. Um, but looking at it, but, so the difference between number one and number two is where they put the warding. So if you were to take you know, either of those keys and cut out like the bits I've covered over in black, let's see, we've got a skeleton key. That is effectively what a skeleton key is. <laughs> it's a key that's just been had you know, any possible warding cut away, and what you're left with will open the lock. So I now only have to carry one of them around with me, not two of them. Obviously, don't, don't go opening doors like that the fire brigade is supposed to open. That wouldn't be good. Uh, we then again, so, so I started buying a bunch of um, modern, just, just different manufacturers of, of, of locks, just purely for, for practicing. Uh, again, these don't have a lot of security functions. Uh, they're incredibly cheaply made. Um, wouldn't offer a huge amount of protection. You know, a simple three-lever example. Another simple three-lever example, manufactured by Yale, rather than last one, Zoo, that well-known lock brand. Um, and again, this one, I mean, interesting in, in sort of the, the, the cheapness of manufacturing or, or how they're trying to reduce the costs. Because if you look at that one, the, the sort of bolt stock thing is like you know, <laughs> it's one piece of metal. Whereas if you look at these, they're starting to make it out of multiple bits of metal, sort of pivoted, um, pinned together and, and, you know, bits stuck on. Um, which again, I guess, is reducing cost. I'm also not convinced that it's you know, it's as strong as, as you know as, um, milling it out of a single piece. But but you know they're they're cheap. They're not high security locks. Um, then you have a Union one, which is basically exactly exactly the same as the Yale. Uh, and again, this is so so um, Union now owned by Asher Abloy, who seem to be buying up everything. And again, the trouble is, is you know, you, you might go and look in the shops and there's this huge range of locks and, and they're all actually made in the same factory with the exact same standards. Um, yeah. The other problem you have, so, so this is a, well, I don't actually know who made this. It's um, some places it's advertised as Eurospec, sometimes it's Easy T. There's a certifier logo on it. Um, who, who knows? And again, just a simple, I mean, it's a, a sash lock, so you, you know, you'd have a handle for the, the spring loaded bolt. Um, but a simple, simple lever lock inside. And again, even more cheaply manufactured bolt. Um, now I started locking up the patent because ah, I've got patent number on. Brilliant. I can research that. Um, and it's, it's just nonsense. So it, it seems to be something to do with, um, with being able to like reverse the spring loaded <coughs> hatch. But if you look at like previous records, you know, they, they tried to patent it in whenever it was the 90s, 2000s. Um, but there was like patents in the 30s to do with that sort of stuff. Um, again, I, I need to spend more time reading patents. They're, they're, they're brilliant patents if if you can find them. You know, I, I've tried <laughs> searching for all sorts of stuff because you know it's like all the you know the chub detector was patented, the barrel lock was patented. Uh, you know, you can find clearly in some books I found pictures that have been taken from the patent documentation, but I can't find the patent documentation. Uh, as well as new stuff, I, I you know I, I buy old secondhand stuff off eBay because I, I again you know how you get good at picking locks is, is you get lots of locks. You, you don't learn to pick one because then you're only good at picking that lock. Um, so and this is a five lever mortise lock rather than the, the three levers we were looking at previously. Again, it has a curtain. So if you look on the, the right hand side, uh, obviously with the key in the normal position, you can see in the keyhole keyway. Uh, you know as soon as you turn start turning the key, the curtain drops in and you, you can't get any tools in. You can't see what's going on. Uh, now, these are starting to show more security features. So if you look, I mean, again, it's a generally heavier construction, um, but if you look on the uh, the levers, there's like false gates. So like these little notches cut. So obviously the real gate is, is you know, is where the, where the, uh, the stump will slide in. But if you're trying to feel stuff, or the stump will catch on that, you'll think, oh, right, that's, that's in the right place. Um, so again, designed to throw you off. Um, you know, like like uh, spool pins and mushroom pins and stuff in, in, in pin tumbler picking. Exact same thing. Uh, slightly different tools to work on them, because obviously you've only got that, that little round hole in the middle once the curtain's activated. So so any tools you've got have got to go through there. Um, so again, you know, thin bit of wire. Uh, oh, you can see on the other side, there's like a channel running down the middle of the tools. So the wire goes in that, you put it in the lock, turn it, and then, you know, use the wire as before. Again, tools to turn the key from the other side of the lock if you leave it in. Um, so these ones, where the previous ones were corkscrews and would actually grab onto like the, the key bit in. Uh, these have just got like a tiny, tiny little knob that will sit into the curtain and turn the curtain. So if the key's in, you know, you can get it that way. How am I doing for time? Okay, get there. Um, I, so a, a guy at the Netherlands gave me this, uh, the Lips Lock. Lips is a, a Dutch manufacturing firm with, again, a, a long history. And I just like this because it's, you know, you look at a sort of like little, you know, UK five-liver mortise, and then you look at this thing, it's it's bigger, it's chunkier, it's heavier. Um, 
and again, you know, it, it's um, similar design. I'll show some pictures to show you know, how the how the uh, the curtain works. Um, hasn't got a lot of the. It's got no false gates or anything on it. What it does have, though, is um, is is sort of drill protection. It's obviously most of it's brass, apart from that big bit of like hardened steel there, which sits exactly over where you'd want to drill through. You know, if you were drilling in from the outside. Um, and again, you know, you see it on safe locks and stuff. It sits to to slow people down, make it more harder. You know, make you use more drill bits, more time, etc. Uh, again, so so you know, five more five lever locks. Um, similar features to the other ones. Uh, there's not really a huge amount to say there. Um, again, how do we make them more complicated? Well, you put more levers in. So so whereas these are sort of intended for residential use, these for like commercial properties. Um, and again, just, I mean, the, what, obviously what you can't tell from the picture is how much that weighs compared with the other ones. Uh, this is basically like hardened steel plates. Again, if you want to try and drill into that, it's going to take you significantly more time and drill bits uh, than the ones at home. Uh, then starting to get into, well, actually, now we're back to, uh, back to safe locks. Um, but, but, you know, seven lever safe locks. A lot of these are um, intended like for, for gun cabinets. They all seem to come in a standard size. Uh, so, so this is one that's, I mean, it's had, it's had the... Um, the bolt modified to presumably connect to some mechanism in inside the safe. Um, but again, fairly simple lock. It's just it's got seven things rather than you know, a fewer. I don't think. Oh no, there's a couple again. There's a couple you can see little false gates on. I think three of the three of the levers have got them. Like the oh, looking from the left, the top one, the bottom one, and then the bottom one on the right as well. So you can see they've got like a little little lip. Um, again, just to try and catch things and, and slow you down. Yeah, more of them. And again, you can pick these up really cheaply. So I, I started buying a few to see how they work. Um, again, I, I haven't yet got around making tools or anything to open them, but it's on my list. Um, it's an interesting one. So, so Tan, Stratford, Chroma, Novum. Um, so again, it, it's, um, I forget how many levers, nine levers. Um, this one, so you, you see again, it's got this from the outside. So obviously that would be on the, you know, like from the, the outside of the door facing in. Um, it's got this hardened steel plate, again, just in exactly the point where when it's locked, the stump would sit. Because if this is going to open this, put this way through it, drill that out, um, at which point there's nothing holding it in place. So they've added, you know, a hardened steel plating to, uh, to try and stop it. Um, again, it's a lovely thing. Um, another weird thing about this is um, it's only got a single spring, whereas on the other locks, you know, each lever had its own spring, so differences in springs you might be able to use to, to you know, overcome it in some way. This one just has one spring that drives everything. Um, it also has, I, when I went to take this apart, like, like the, the levers don't come out one by one, they come out like as a pack. Um, so you've got this lovely, um, lovely brass spiral y thing. Um, and presumably you can get them up. But I'd seen people selling like just the lever packs and keys online without the bodies. And I, and I thought, oh, why have they, why have they stuck them together like that? But no, it's, it's how they come. Um, and like I say, there's, you know, so there is one spring that connects to one of the levers, which has a post on it, which then pushes all of them. So again, you only have a single spring. There's going to be no variations in, uh, in spring tension. And again, it's got, if you look at the, the picture top right, you know, it's got a lot of false gates as well as real gates. So again, you know, designed to slow you down when you're opening it. Uh, what's up from a nine lever lock or a ten lever lock? Uh, so again, a, a, a pan chroma um, plunger lock, uh, and you can tell. I mean, again, we were discussing keys earlier in the, in the room. You, you can tell locks are intended to be put behind big doors because they have really long keys. Uh, this one's quite interesting because it actually comes with a long key and a short key, and the, the heads interchangeable. So you swap them around, uh, which is a nice design. And again, it's you know, big heavy solid thing. Um, you know, it would be behind a, a significantly large door. Um, again, it's, uh, it's, it's got a curtain in it. Um, but otherwise, that's it. It's, it's you know, similar to the others, just, just more levers, small levers. And, and what's the step up from a 10 lever lock? Well, well then you get a 14 lever lock. Uh, this one's interesting because it has two stumps. So everything we've looked at before, you know, has a single stump that moves. This has got one top and one bottom. So, so really it's, it's two seven lever locks in one body. But obviously the key moves, moves both at once. Um, and again, you can see this has got um, this has got some false gates and stuff in it. Um, and again, yeah, taking these apart is brilliant. You just have to remember which order you put things in. Um, but like I say, lovely, lovely bit of kit. They're, um, the, the action on them is really smooth. You look at these things, they're always going to be like big, heavy, and nice. so they're, they're really nice. Uh, now the thing is, thinking about um, sorry, I've got time. Thinking about 
if you want to like change company, I mean, like we you know we take apart pin tumblers, put them back together again. That's dead easy ish with the right tools. Like if you want to if you want to change the keying on a lock uh, like this, you know you're going to have to get in the safe, take the lock off the safe, take it apart, you know, put it back together with different levers in the right key. It, it's an amount of work. Um, so, so somebody clever came up with this idea of, right, we'll have a mechanism by which you don't have to dismantle the lock to rekey it. Um, and I've got a couple of examples of these, which I think are, I mean, it's, it's ingenious. Um, so this is a, a variant B. Uh, so 11 levers, uh, which has over 60 million possible keying combinations. So again, you've gone from the days of like, right, I can make 20 keys and that will open every possible lock to like, I'm, I'm not making 60 million keys or standing there trying them one at a time. Um, and this thing's, it, it's, this is the first safe lock I ever got. Somebody, um, gave me this as a gift at 44 con years ago. And it's beautiful. Um, and I used to take the case off and you show people, um, like, oh, look at the mechanism of this. Cause you know, when you put the key in and turn it, the, um, these bits sort of fan out. And then obviously that they slot into the various plates there. Uh, you, you'd hand it to people to show them and be, wow, that's really pretty, and turn it upside down, <laughs> and all the internals would fall out. So I got really good at putting this back together. In fact, I made a CTF challenge around putting this back together. Um, but I never, I never took anything out beyond the, those plates and the, um, the, the lever bits um, until I was getting ready for this. Um, so I didn't realise it's, it's got a rekeying mechanism. So the idea being, you, you open the lock with the real key, you slide the thing on the back, then take the key out, then you put the key you want it to be in, turn it, slide the thing again, and it's now set for that key. So again, you don't have to dismantle anything. You, you just have to have the old key and the new key, and well, and access to the lock, obviously. Um, so again, I started taking it apart, you know, taking bits out, taking photos so I can understand where everything goes back. Um, the, the very bottom... The not a bottom lever. Again, it's got a stump, so it shared springs. Um, and there's this locking mechanism, so, so that like that latch there will, will hook it in that bit when it's open or, or hang back when it isn't. Again, I guess to stop you trying to move the bolt. Uh, oh yeah, that, that, that lever is the thing that actually slides the bolt, if you fix it at the top and connect it uh, at the bottom. And then this is the mechanism once you get all that out of the way and take the bolt out of the way. So there's a little hole in the back, the, the little plastic switches, some clear plastic bits which don't show up very well in the photograph, but that basically controls this arm, and when that arm swings into place, it pushes. So this is the um, this is the bolt, and on the bottom of the bolt there's this spring-loaded bit, and if you look at the picture, I'm going to point it aside because I have to less walk, walk less. So when you reopen it with the real key, slide that thing, and then close it again, basically that there slides back, at which point none of these plates are connected and they're free to move around, so then you put the real key in, set it the way you want to be, unslide it, and it will pop back in, and you've just rekeyed the lock without having to dismantle anything or take anything apart. So, you know, it makes it... I, I hesitate to use the word idiot-proof. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I have, As of today, I have a second key for it. So this afternoon, I'm going to go and see if I can if I can get it working and swap it from one key to the other. It, I, I understand the theory of how it should work. Uh, it's just whether it does or not. But, you know, if you, if you hear swearing, that, that'll be when it's gone horribly wrong. And again, you know, I mean, it, obviously this is a significantly more complex lock than some of the ones we've looked at previously. Lots more bits of metal. Um, although, I mean, again, I guess it's clever design because a lot of those bits of metal are identical. So you're just making lots of the same thing um, and, and putting it all together. Uh, the, I think this is the final one. We're almost at the end. Um, so this is... What is this? This was from a fire safe uh, recovered. So again, I'm, I'm you know, I, I keep an eye on eBay for people who are, and in fact, I've got chatting to a few people who, who sort of restore and repair safes, you know, for, for a hobby or a living. And I, I looked at this one and it, it messed with my head to begin with until I worked out what was going on. Because again, it looks horribly complex inside. So on, on the back of it, there's this this um, this knob you can twist, which is to do with the rekey mechanism and, and nice, decent instructions on exactly how you use it. Again, trying to make it idiot proof. Oh, the other thing is um, it, another long key. Uh, this one that you can unscrew the end off. So up by the handle, uh, there's this yeah, the old uh, turning key, <coughs> and as you turn that, so you can you know so you can swap key blanks uh, without having to throw the entire key away. Um, but yeah, so inside this looks a bit weird because um, you've got like sort of a lever within a lever. Um, and again, I, I looked at this and it's like, what on earth? How on earth does this work? Um, but you know, from reading the instructions and dismantling it and looking at it, so basically you, you know, you put the key in, you do it at half turn, 
you turn the knob on the back, and what that does is it pulls this away. Oh, no, no, I'll push this away. Basically, it disconnects these inner teeth. Um, so, obviously, on the outside, again, you've got, you know, false gates to try and you know, keep you from picking it. But, but internally, these teeth under normal operation, they don't move. But when you turn that thing on the back, they separate. So then you can put a new key in, realign them, turn the knob back. And again, you've now got a save with a different key without having to um, to have done any tricky work in taking them apart. I mean, I, I genuinely like working on lever locks. They're a damn sight easier to take apart than pin tumblers. You know, normally, like you need a screwdriver and maybe a pair of tweezers, and that's about it. I, I'm yet to have any explode horribly. Whereas if you look at some of the other high security locks I've got, it's like you know that there are going to be springs and pins and sidebars and stuff flying everywhere. Um, these are very easy to work on. Um, which is why I say I, I like them so much. Um, so yeah, so so that is uh, not quite an hour, but we're getting on for. Um, I, I, I say I've got a lot of other locks. I've, I've got you know I've, I've got disc turner locks. I've got all sorts of weird you know pin tumbler variants. I've got all sorts of bizarre things I've never seen in you know, dimple lock slider locks. Um, you know all sorts of driverless stuff. Um, I, I genuinely thought I would have time today to talk about you know another hundred locks or so. Um, but, but I guess not. But like I say, I'm, 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 I might end up on YouTube if anybody wants to watch me take locks apart and swear a lot. Um, I, I will take better photos. So all of these were just done with my phone. I need to get like a proper setup um, with some decent lighting and a better camera, um, especially if I'm going to publish them online. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, so you know, if, if I haven't bored you enough today, then, you know, I, I may well be talking uh, at future events. I am talking at security, but about something completely different. Um, so yeah, that that is enough for me. Any questions? A three D printed. Um, so I have a friend who is um, is, is designing locks for fun because he's trying to. There's a, a guy we know who is ridiculously good at lock picking, and my friend is trying to design a lock that he will not be able to pick. And he's sort of prototyping stuff in in cut wood or three D printed. I think mostly cut wood. Um, I, I guess he's going to, you know, eventually he will, he will manufacture it in something proper. But I don't, the trouble is, I don't know if it'd be strong enough if, if you're, I mean, okay, you can, you can 3D print in metal, can't you? But I don't, let's see. I mean, a lot of it seems to be, you know, either like stamped metal or milled metal. Um, I have not seen any, but it, it wouldn't surprise me um, eventually. <coughs> but yeah, not currently. And given the level of paranoia that comes with a hobby like this, what does your front door look like? Rubbish. <laughs> um, so no, no. People people ask me like like a lot. You know, oh, well, should I should I get really expensive locks for my house? And it's like, no, it's a waste of money. F find the cheapest um, approved lock that your insurance provider will approve, and get a massive dog. That's what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> so I have now the, the locks on my house are terrible. I mean, the trouble is, b because of the people I know. It's, there's no, I know people will be able to pick them. Um, and, and also, you know, if, if I look at your house and you've got really expensive locks, well, you must have really expensive stuff you're protecting. And the thing is, you know, we know, no, you know, a, a, a thief isn't going to come and like, pick your locks. They're going to smash a window or just kick the door down or, you know, climb on the roof and cut a hole in the roof. Or, you know, there, there aren't these, these like master thieves going around, you know, spending time. Uh, it's, it's just, it's not in their interests. Um, you know, they just want to like smash a window and grab your telly. Um, so unless, I mean, the other thing is, is um, you know, like, because you get, you know, like different star ratings of lock. It's like, the, you know, there's no point putting a five star rated lock on a door that's like one star rated. <laughs> um, so again, it's like, no, spend more money reinforcing the rest of the door. Um, but yeah, let's say for, for home use, it's, I mean, if I had commercial premises, maybe differently. So some of the places I've worked, like for the MOD and stuff, have significantly better locks. And it's funny, I, I went around to a locksmith's house the other night and I wasn't sure if I'd got the right place. Because there wasn't numbers marked on the houses, and I walked down his, his, his top driveway, and the security lights came on, and I looked at the front door, and it's like, yeah, locksmith lives here, because it, it was like Fort Knox. Um, but no, let's say I, I personally, I, I prefer, let's say, having having a big animal. I mean, my, my dog's actually ridiculously soft; he'd probably help you carry the stuff out. Um, <laughs> but, but people don't know that. <laughs> and he, he looks he looks scary. If you've got something like a dome and it stands up at the window, going, nang, 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 nang. Mm. you're not going to try and get in. No, I mean it's funny. My again, my um, my other half has locked herself out when I've been away, and that's I'm, I'm, I'm friends with some local locksmiths. So I'll phone them up and say, "Can you go around and let her, let her in?" And she says, "They'll turn up and they'll be like, yeah, door's open now.' Like, well, aren't you going to open it?' It's like, no, no, I can hear what's inside.' <laughs> um, so yeah, let's like say it's it's you know defence in depth. 
Uh, ad- adequate locks and, and, and backup protection. Do you have a favourite lock of all time? <sighs> um, I, I genuinely, I, I really, really like that one. But, oh, hang on. That thing, because that, like I say, that was, that was the first sort of decent lock I ever got given, and it's the one I've spent the most time with. Um, the chroma protector that I've got, which is my, my friend's absolute favourite, he will not shut up a bit. It's a very clever design, um, the way it works. I, I haven't dared take that apart yet, because I'm terrified I won't be able to get it back together. Although it is apparently reasonably simple if, if you're careful and, and keep note of what comes out where and when. Um, but yeah, like I say, I, I personally like that one, just, just because it was, like I say, it was the first, first decent lock I got. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's 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 a clever design, but then again, there's there's a lot of that. That's why I, you know, that's what fascinates me about them. Mm. Is, is you know, you start with something, and then there's some weird and wacky, you know, design choices that have been made and, and sort of you know stood the test, like the curtain. You know, was invented years ago. We still have them, but then there have been things along the way like, oh, we've got this idea. No, and then things like the Western Electric Thirty C, which has a, a, the internal mechanism. I, I don't think I've seen another lock the same. Um, and I say yeah, that that did stand the test of time. Um, but yeah, no, so, so the, the design and thought that goes into them is, um, yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> any, any more for any more, or can I go? Oh no, go on then. Here's a question. Why brass for the, the mechanism <coughs> connecting to rather than something stronger? Uh, so brass is self-lubricating, so over time uh, it's not going to like rust and need um, sort of special treatment. Um, I guess it's easy to work with. I mean, again, they, they tend to put, you know, bits of steel where they, I mean, it's, it's, if you look at, um, you know, sort of modern pin tumblers, um, you know, they will put like steel pins in or little steel plates to make them more difficult to drill, but they won't manufacture the entire thing out of steel. Right. Um, like I say, I think the self lubricating thing is a big part of it. You know, they'll, they'll keep working. They'll just keep working. You won't have to oil them. Um, and they, yeah, they won't rust. The rust bit. Yeah. Cause of course you don't want, the internal mechanism it rusting up and you again you know, have to destroy the lock yeah, to get it open you, you know, yeah. it's also soft enough that it doesn't weigh your key down and it's cheap no no the trouble is your keys wear it down because of course they do make exactly. the keys out of steel um, and yeah again like I say locking, locking up some of the older locks I've got you can definitely see where over time like I say bits gouged in and, and yeah because you're rubbing steel against brass and that's how you machine stuff when, when you've got one of these these curtains. What's the best way to get around that? Can you can you stop it coming down? No. Or do you just have to? No, no. Make so you, do with you, you you just have to have a tool you, that you goes goes through, through that little round bit. Um, again, clever clever design. I mean, it also stops you because you know, like if you can see in the locks, you can perhaps work out how things are cut. Or so again, the fact that it completely encloses all of that. Like I say, it's not just the fact that the curtain comes in, which is an issue. It's also the fact that when it's in place, you can't lock up inside the lock body. I mean, you know, when you're, you know, when you're sort of looking at locks to, to work out a lot of time, it's like, right, what can I see inside? What can I, you know, get that? What can I, what can I understand about what's going on internally? And, and that completely stops any of that. Um, and like I say, then when you vi- do finally turn it, the only space you've got is that tiny little holes. So you're limited to whatever tools you can get in that way, unless you start drilling holes in it or whatever. I mean, again, a lot of, you know, safe opening is, is knowing where to drill the holes to get things in, to, to hammer things out the way, or to be able to see the internal mechanisms to manipulate it better. Um, but, I mean, there are people who open safes entirely based on feel. Uh, but like I say, I think a lot of it is, is now I, I need to know the template for where I drill to, you know, get the stump or, or at least get something where I can see see the levers. Again, I, I, I have not done no professional safe work. It's something I aspire to. But, but you know, like, like safe vault technicians or I know two lock pickers, what like lock pickers are to people who don't open locks. Yeah. Um, again, they're very secretive because obviously there is a significant amount of money um, protecting what they do. Um, but yeah. Anyone else? Or can I go back to my room and or lunch and or to go and watch another talk? I think it's Glenn on now. Thank you very much. <laughs>